Welcome back friends. We have already started with chapter number 2. It is sexual reproduction in flowering plants. I just let you know that what we have finished till now in chapter number 2. We have finished a reproductive part of an angiosperm that is a flower. We have discussed the different parts of a flower, calyx, corolla, androsium, gynosium. Then we have started with sexual reproduction, the events and processes. It follows the three processes, pre-fertilization, fertilization and post-fertilization. It's like the other living organism who reproduces sexually. We have started with the first process, pre-fertilization. And in pre-fertilization, we have finished with gametogenesis process. Means a process of formation of a gamete that we have discussed. In the previous sessions, we have seen how the male gametes are produced in the pollen grains and how the female gamete is going to be produced in the ovaries. Now, once the gametes are going to be form formed, this gamete needs to be transported. Okay? And that is done by a process called as gamete transfer. Because you know that in pre-fertilization, the second one is gamete transfer. Because the ultimate process is the fusion of both these gametes. Okay, and to fuse that, they should come together. And to come together, we have to transport the gametes. Usually, what happens? The male gamete is a motile in nature, and the female gamete is a stationary. But here, it is a flowering plant. It is an angiosperm. You know that we have learned in the chapter number one. In angiosperm, male and female gamete both are non-motile. Okay, both cannot move. Hence, there should be some mechanism that leads to a transfer of male gamete to a female gamete. And there need or there should be a help that should be provided that leads to a transfer of male gamete to a female gamete. Okay, so how this process is going to occur or who will provide a help that we have to discuss today. Okay, so starting with that. How, what is the transfer process is called? The transfer process is called as pollination. What it is called? Pollination. So what is a pollination process? Pollination, that means transfer of pollen grain from where the pollen grain is produced? From anther to stigma of a carpet. This process is called as pollination process. Clear to this? So what is a pollination process? Pollination that means it is a transfer process, a gamete transfer process. How it occurs or what is going to be transferred? Where it is going to be transferred? It is a transfer of what? Pollen grain. From where? It's from anther. To where? It's, it's transferred from anther to a stigma of a carpet. This process is called as pollination process. Okay students? Okay? Now, here as you already know that the male gamete and female gamete both are stationary. So it needs a pollinating agent like it needs a bee or it needs a water or it needs an insect or it needs an animal. Any kind of a pollinating agent that is needed by it to transfer this pollen grain from anther to a stigma. But before we discuss the pollination agents or pollinating agents, we should learn what are the different types of pollination or what are the different types of transfer processes which occurs. Okay? So this is now we discuss this pollination process. The pollination process can be divided into two parts. First is called as self-pollination and the second one is called as cross-pollination. How many types of pollination processes are there? There are two types of pollination processes are there. Self-pollination and the second one is called as cross-pollination. In a cell pollination, the name itself says it, a pollen grain of a same plant is transferred to a uh, or pollen grain of a one flower is transferred to a another flower or the same flower of a same plant. This is known as cell pollination process. 
So I again repeat, what is the self-pollination process? Self-pollination process that means transfer of pollen grain from a flower to a another flower of same plant or a different plant. Okay, so this is called as it's called as a self pollination process. Okay, so usually it occurs within the same flower or it happens within the different flowers. Okay, so this is called as self pollination. Most of the times it is occur within the same flower. Okay, so based on that the self pollination can be divided into two parts. First is called as autogamy, and the second one is called as gitonogamy. Okay, and what is called as the cross pollination? The cross pollination that means a transfer of pollen grain from one plant to a another plant. Okay, flower of a one plant to a flower of another plant. Okay, this is called as cross pollination process. Okay, so there is a difference between a self pollination and a cross pollination. In the self pollination, a pollen grain is going to be transferred from a flower to another flower, okay, of same plant, okay. So this is called as a self pollination. And what is called as a cross pollination? Cross pollination that means it is a transfer of pollen grain from a flower to another flower of a different plant. This is called as a cross pollination process, okay. In the first case, the plant will be the same. In the second case, it is the plant is a different plant, okay. So now we know that self pollination. How many types of self pollination? Autogamy and the gitonogamy. Both are the types of self pollination. So how the process occurs? Suppose assume that this is a plant. Could be as a flower. Assume that this is a flower which is present in the plant. It contains a male reproductive organ. And this is a female reproductive organ which is present in the flower. Okay, this is a male reproductive organ. Answer is biology. And this is a female reproductive organ. Plus. Now, how this transfer process occurs? In autogamy. Auto means cells. Okay, so this autogamy is reported in bisexual flower. In which case it is reported? It is reported into a bisexual flower. What is a bisexual flower? Bisexual flower means it is a flower. This is a flower. A flower possesses both sex organs. One is male stamen and the second one is a carpet, a female part. Okay, they both are present in the same flower. This is called as a bisexual flower. So here the pollen grain which is going to be released. These are the pollen grain which is going to be released. It is transferred to a stigma of a carpet of same flower, same flower. This is the beginner flower, it occurs, of same plant. This type of pollination is called as autogamy. What it is called as autogamy. Okay? So, what is autogamy? Autogamy means it is a transfer of pollen grain from anther to a stigma. Answer to a stigma of a carpel of same plant of a same plant. This is called as autogamy. Okay, okay, clear students. Now, what is the gitanogamy? What is the gitanogamy? So, I draw over here. What is the gitanogamy? Suppose assume that this is a plant. Okay, this is a flower. Now, this is a male sexual organ, third, this is the female, this is a male sexual organ, seven, and this is a female carpet. Okay. So, what is the detail of it? Here, the pollen grain is released from anther. That is transferred to another flower. Sigma of another flower, okay? Sigma of a carpel of another flower, but the plant remains the same. This type of pollination is called as gitonogamy. What's called as 
जीतन क्लियर ओके ऑटोगेमी एंड जीतन टाइप्स ऑफ सेल पोलिनेशन प्रोसेस ओके इन ऑटोगेमी अ ट्रांसफर ऑफ पोलन ग्रेन फ्रॉम एंथर टू अटिग्मा ऑफ अ कार्पल ऑफ सेम फ्लावर ऑफ सेम प्लांट दिस इज कॉल एज ऑटोगेमी what is called as a digitogamy a transfer of pollen grain from anther to a stigma of a carpel of another flower this is another flower to different flower but the plant is same of same plant this is called as digitogamy okay so these are the types of autogamy and digitogamy are types of a self pollination process okay now what are the conditions in which the chances of autogamy is higher or what are the conditions that leads to a autogamy means a type of a self pollination where a pollen grain is transferred from anther to a stigma or of a carpel of same flower of a same plant what it is first thing to autogamy occur these are the condition has to be followed then and then the chances of autogamy is high so what are the chances that has to be followed first one here the anther and stigma both should mature at same time same time enter that means enter sorry here enter enter and stigma both should mature at the same time Okay, that means where a time where the male gametes are produced at the same time, the stigma also should become a receptive, which can capable of taking a pollen grain, which is released from the anther. Okay, the second condition to follow this autogamy that anther or this stamen and carpel should be nearer to each other. They should be nearer to each other. If they are nearer to each other, then the chances of transfer is very high. So these are the conditions has to be followed, or that these conditions they promote autogamy process, a type of a self pollination process. So which condition promote a self pollination process? First, the anther and stigma should mature at the same time. It should not like that they mature at the different time. Okay? If if they mature at the different time. the transfer is not possible and ultimately fertilization is not possible second they should be nearer to one each other okay as they are nearer to each other like they are present in the same flower means they are nearer to each other okay so the chances of fertilization and transfer is very high so these are the conditions which has to be followed by plant i will give you examples in which it is going to be followed like this condition the anther and stigma become the receptive at the same time or anther and stigma becomes a mature at the same time this condition is called as homogamy okay homogamy say gamete means gamete means they produces the gamete at the same time why they produces the gamete at the same time they means stamen and carpel both are producing the gamete at the same time okay so here they are producing the gamete at the same time Why they produce the gametes at the same time? Because they mature at the same time. Okay, and this kind of a condition that is found in the plant called as Catharanthus roseus. What we commonly call it as bar mastery. Okay, so this homogamy condition promotes autogamy or a self pollination process. Okay, clear students. So, what is the homogamy? Homo means the same, gamete means gamete. Means in these cases, the male and female reproductive organs become mature at the same time. They produce the gamete at the same time, and it is observed in the Catharanthus roseus. If such condition is there, then the chances of autogamy is high because they become mature at the same time. Second condition. This also promotes self pollination process. Self pollination process. That means when the anther and stigma are nearer to each other, the chances are that the pollen grain falls on the stigma which is nearer to it. Okay, and so this is also promotes autogamy, and that is observed in the case of Pleistogamy flower. 
Okay. Now the third type. This is called as cross pollination process. So let's start with the cross pollination. Before I start the cross pollination, I will also like to mention again what are the conditions that leads to a, or that promotes a cell pollination. First condition is homogamy. Homogamy means the anther and sigma becomes a mature at the same time, and it is observed in Catharanthus rosius, commonly called as Barnum. Second condition in which the anther and sigma comes nearer to each other. Okay, how it occurs? The style. Suppose assume that this is a and uh, stamen and this is a carpet. Here the style gets bended towards the anther, so they come nearer to each other, and that is observed in this one. APAC, LAMAC, and CACTAC family plant. Third is Clistogamy, that also promotes the self pollination. In Clistogamy or Clistogamous flower, that means the flower which is never opens up. So the pollen grain doesn't go outside, it remains inside within the same flower. And so that also promotes a self pollination process. Clear? Now the next type of a pollination process is a cross pollination process. So let's start with a cross pollination process. As you know that autogamy occurs in bisexual flower. Next, a cross pollination usually is reported into a unisexual flower. Okay, what is a unisexual flower? The unisexual flower that means it has either a stamen or it has either carpet. If it has a stamen, then it is called as a male flower. If it has carpet, then it is called as a female flower. So what happens in this case? Suppose I'll assume that this is a one flower and it has a flower. Suppose I'll assume that it has a stem, it has a stem, it has a stem. It is a unisexual, it doesn't have a carpet. Stem is, so that's why this is a male flower. Male flower. Now it's another flower. So another plant. And it's another flower, plant is a flower. It has female reproductive organ, like carpet. It is, as it is a female reproductive organ, it's carpet. This flower is called as female flower. So this is a plant which possesses a male flower, and this is a plant which possesses a female flower. Okay? Now, here the transfer of polar grain, even the polar grain is released from anther, that means a male flower, that is transferred and reached to a stigma of carpet of another flower. The flower gets changed of another plant. Here, plant gets changed also. However, this type of pollination is called as cross pollination. What it is called as cross pollination. Okay? What is a cross pollination? Cross pollination that means transfer of pollen grain from anther to a stigma of a carpet of another flower of another plant. This is called as cross pollination. I just revise the definition so you can come to know the difference between autogamy, heteronogamy, and uh, you can say a cross pollination. In uh, autogamy, the transfer of pollen grain from anther to a stigma or a carpet of same flower of same plant. Here the transfer of pollen grain from another flower of same plant. Okay, here same flower, same plant in autogamy, in gitanogamy, another flower, same plant, and in cross pollination, another flower, another plant. Okay, so this is a kind of hybridization is going to be produced. Okay, so this is called as cross pollination. Cross pollination can also be called as anogamy. What's another name of cross pollination? Cross pollination can be called as allogamy process. Okay? Like you know that when there is a transfer of self pollination, when there is a homogamy, means it becomes a mature at the same time. When the style comes nearer to a anther, or it bends towards the anther, okay? Or it what happens, it happens in the case of clistogamous flower. Similarly, where when the cross pollination takes place. Cross pollination takes place in heterogamy. 
Homo means same, metro means different. Homo metro means they become the mature at the same time. Here is a hetero means. Hetero means different. They become the mature at different times. When they become the mature at different times, so here suppose assume that enter becomes a mature and this doesn't become a mature. So the pollination process uh, is not sufficient to produce the fertilized. Living organism or is not capable of fertilizing. So this is not possible. Okay, but heterogamic it promotes a cause of cross pollination. So if they become the mature at different time, like this one and this one, okay, they mature at a different time. Okay, even though that pollen grain is transferred, it is not capable of fertilizing it because here it is mature, but this carpet or stigma doesn't become the mature. Okay, so this is called as heterogamy. Second one is heterocyme. What is the heterocyme? Heterocyme that means I have just shown a one carpel in a flower, but it is not necessary as we have seen in the previous lecture. The carpel may be one or carpel may be many, monocarpillary or multicarpillary, or we have also seen the bicarpillary. The carpel may be many or carpel may be one. So if there are many carpets, it has many sigma style over it, but there is a difference in the star, length of a style. Difference in the length of a star. This is called as heterostyle. This heterostyle it promotes it. Okay? Next, next third one is called uh, as herpogen. Herpogen, what is the herpogen? Herpogen that means there is a presence of a physical barrier. There is a presence of physical barrier between a anther and stigma. So the pollen grain doesn't transfer to this. It will transfer to a another flower. Okay? So this is called as herpogen. And next is self sterility. Self sterility is a genetic mechanism that will prevent a self pollination or it promotes a cross pollination. So these are the conditions which prevents the cell pollination that we will discuss in the another short term in an outbreak device. But just remember the name heterogamy, heterostyle, herpogamy, and cell stability. Okay? Heterogamy means they become a mature at different time intervals. Heterostyle means a difference in the length of a style. Herpogamy, that means uh, there is a presence of physical barrier between a anther and sigma or stamen and carpet. Cell sterility means fall of pollen grain of stigma doesn't guarantee it will germinate or it will fertilize. Or oh, it's a genetic mechanism as far as the cell sterility. So these are the conditions that promote cross pollination. Okay? And they inhibit cell pollination process. Okay? Now the question comes in our mind. Which is better one? Cell pollination is better or cross pollination is better? Here the fertilization occurs within the same plant and here the fertilization occurs uh, between two different plants. Okay? So that happens in a cross pollination process which is better. Okay? So let's see. If it is a cell fertilization, cell pollination or cell, then what happens? The transfer occurs within the plant. Transfer of pollen grain occurs within a plant and that is causing inbreeding depression. What it causes? Inbreeding depression. That's why we are not marrying to our uh, brother or sister or our siblings, close relatives. We are not marrying with our close relatives because this is called as a kind of a cell fertilization. So here if there is a cell pollination, then the cell fertilization occurs and that causes an inbreeding uh, depression. That means the chances of occurrence of genetic disorder is very high. Okay, that we will learn in the chapter number 5, how it occurs. Okay, so that's why we are not marrying with a close relatives like brother, sister or siblings, uh, we are not marrying. But cross pollination, the cross pollination, they will promote a better generation. And so that's why the better one is cross pollination. In a cell pollination, the answer is, in a cell pollination, which is better, uh, sorry, the question is, which is better one, cell pollination or cross pollination? So the answer is cross pollination is better one because in cross pollination the chances of development of higher variety of a living organism or generations. Whereas in cell pollination there is a occurrence of inbreeding depression, they may lead to a 
genetic disorders. Okay, so that's why the pollination is better. So clear students, this is regarding pollination. Pollination means transfer of pollen grain from anther to a sigma of a carpet. It may be cell, it may be cross. In a cell pollination transfer occurs within a same plant, either in the same flower or the other flower. Either in the same flower or the other flower. This is cell pollination. And in cross pollination, the transfer occurs uh, of a uh, or transfer occurs between two different flowers of two different plants. This is called as a cross pollination process. Okay? So we have learned autogamy, gitanogamy, and endogamy. Endogamy means cross pollination. The another name of cross pollination, endogamy. Okay? So that's all about pollination. Now let's move ahead with pollinating agents or pollination agents. Now you know the meaning of pollination. I hope everybody knows the meaning of pollination. It's a transfer of pollen grain from anther to a sigma of a carpel. This is called as pollination. Here it is transferred, but you know that both the gametes here are non-motile, means they cannot move. They need a help to transfer. And the agent which help in the transfer process, they are called as pollination agents. So what is pollination agent? Pollination agents are the agents or carriers. They help, they help in a transfer of pollen grain from anther to a sigma. They are called as pollination agents. So now a question comes in our mind. Who will help? So there are two kinds of pollination agents. First is called as abiotic pollination agents. Abiotic means non-living. And the second one is biotic pollination agent, that means living. How many types of pollination agents are there? Two types of pollination agents are there. Abiotic and biotic. Okay? Abiotic means non-living pollination agents and the biotic means the living pollination agents. What includes under the abiotic pollination agents? First, wind or air. Second, water. Here the pollen grain is transferred by either by air or water. This is called as abiotic pollination agents. The biotic biotic includes animals, including insects. Okay, they are the biotic, they are the living. Okay, so there are two types of pollination agents: abiotic and biotic. Abiotic includes wind and water. The biotic includes animals and the insects. These are the pollination agents. In majority of a plant, the transfer means pollination occurs with the help of biotic agents. Okay? Which agents? The majority of plants who will help in a pollination process, biotic means living organism helps in the transfer of a pollen grain. Okay? But we have to discuss all. Okay? So we have to discuss all type of pollinating agents. Let's start with abiotic pollination agents. And abiotic includes what? Water and wind. First is wind. You know that wind is a abiotic pollination agent. What is a wind? Wind is a abiotic non living pollinating agent. Wind. When the wind is blown, it carries the pollen grain from anther to a stigma. Okay? So this, this type of pollination is, uh, this type of help is called as the pollination which is done by a wind. The pollination which occurs with the help of a wind, this is called as anemophily. What it is called as? Anemophily. Okay, what is the anemophily? Anemophily, that means 
a pollination that occurs with the help of a wing. This is called as anemone. Now, to transfer with the help of a wing, there are the certain characteristics a plant needs. Here, the pollen radius carried away by a wing. So the pollen grain which is present in such kind of a plant or in any mobile, the pollen grain should be a small enough, it should be lighter in weight, it should be dry, it should be non-sticky, okay, non-sticky because if it is sticky, then it sticks to somewhere. The wind cannot carry it. So it should be a dry, it should be a non-sticky. These are the characteristics of pollen grain. Who Transfer the pollen grains with the help of wind, or this is called as in anemophily. So those plants who pollinate with the help of anemophily, they have small, lighter, dry, and non-sticky pollen grains. Now, what 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 should be the characteristic of the carpet of such kind of a plant? The carpet or the the carpet or stigma of that should be such a that. It is a sticky or it may be a feathery. Okay? Why sticky? Because suppose this is a desert carpet, it is a sticky. Pollen grain should be non sticky. When the pollen grain comes over here and reaches to a stigma, once it reaches to a stigma, it should not go away. The wind should not carry. So it should be a sticky, so it sticks the pollen grain. Or it should be a feathery with feathers. So the pollen grain can be occluded in the Feeder, okay, or get engaged in the feeder. So this is a characteristic of a, a carpet of a plant who pollinate with the help of a wind. Okay. Usually, what happens in these cases? If you see the arrangement, suppose this is a plant. The male flower is present at the top, and the female flower is present at the bottom. So the pollen grain which is carried away by B can go to a transfer from cancer to a stigma. Okay? Usually in these cases, the male flower is present at the top of a plant and the female flower is at the bottom. Reverse is not the case. Like this is not the case. This is female flower and this is male flower. If this is the case, when the female flower is at the top and the male flower at the bottom, then the transfer of pollen grain is not possible. Okay, because here the pollen grain, sorry, transfer of pollen grain like this is not possible because wind cannot carry the pollen grain like in the upward directions. Okay, so this is not the case in the plant who pollinate with the help of a wind, but this is the case. So the pollen grain can easily fall off. There are very less chances that pollen grain will rise along with a wind current. Okay, and this type of pollination is found in maize, coconuts, or even the grasses, etc. This type of pollination is found. Okay, or this pollinating agent will have, and this is a abiotic. I can repeat the first abiotic agent which has been a pollination is a bee. Pollination which occurs with the help of a bee is called as anemophilic. The characteristic of plants who pollinate with the help of a wind, the pollen grain of such plant is such that it should be small, lighter and dry, so it can easily carry it away along with a wind current. The carpet of such a plant is such, uh, the carpet of a plant who pollinate by wind is such that it should be sticky or withered, so it can receive the incoming pollen grains. It is Usually what happens, the male flower should be present at the top and the female flower at the bottom which facilitates anemophily. But if the reverse, female flower at the top and male flower at the bottom, then it doesn't facilitate anemophily. It occurs in these cases, it occurs in maize, coconut, grasses, etc. So this is a first agent which shows the pollination can occur by wind. Another reverse agent by which a pollination takes place. And that is water. Water is the another agent, abiotic agent. Okay? So this is also abiotic agent, non-living agent, which helps in a pollination process. Okay? And the pollination with the help of water is called as hydrophilic. 
what is called as hydrophilic. Okay, so previous students, the pollination with the help of wind is called as anemophilic, and the pollination with the help of water is called as hydrophilic. This hydrophilic, with a pollination with the help of water, is observed in a monopod plant. It is only observed for to up to just a 30 genera. There are limited quantity of a plant. Only 30 genera they show a pollination with the help of a water. And all these plants are monopod plants. Okay? So it is only observed in hydrophilic is only limited up to a 30 genera of all monopody latinx plants. I will give you a few examples in which it is reported. It is reported into a hydrilla. It is also reported into a Valisneria. It is reported into a Zostera. Okay, these all are aquatic plants, means the plants which grows in water. Rubber, this hydrilla and Valisneria. They grow in fresh water and in Zostera it grows in marine water, sea water. Okay, so these are the examples of a plant in which hydrophilic or the pollination with help of water is in Hydrilla, Valisneria and Zostera. These are the plants in which pollination occurs. Hydrilla and Valisneria are fresh water plants and Zostera is a marine plants. Okay, so it grows in marine water. You can also call it as marine grass. Zostera can also be called as marine grass. Now we have to understand how the pollination occurs in this species. Let's understand with the example of Valisneria. Suppose I think that this is a water. The plants who pollinate with the help of water, they are usually aquatic plants, means they grow in the water. So here the plant is present within a water. Okay? It has two flowers. Male flower and the second one is female flower. The female flower is long stalk and it is highly coiled stalk. It has long and highly coiled stalk is with the female flower. Okay? Both kinds of flower is present in case of Valisneria. I am dictating the hydrophilic with the example of Valisneria. How it affects. Let's see how it affects. When there is a need to transfer a pollen grain, what happens? This male flower comes at the surface May. and releases the pollen grain. This pollen grain you know that very lighter in weight. So obviously they flow in the water surface, flow on the water surface. Okay, it flow on the water surface. Now what happens? This pollen grain are such as that. They are lighter. So they can easily flow. Now, this female flower has a long and highly coiled stalk. So if the stalk becomes uncoiled and the female flower goes to a surface. The stigma of this female flower is such as that it is sticky. It is sticky. So the pollen grain which is flowing into a water current they can easily attach with this sticky sigma of female flower. Once it is attached, the female flower again goes back into a water. Again goes back into water. Okay? So this type of pollination occurs in case of Valisneria. I can repeat how the pollination occurs in a Valisneria. In Valisneria, it is an aquatic plant. It grows in fresh water. It possesses both male flower as well as female flower. Both the flowers are present in the water. When the pollen grain has to be released, the male flower releases the pollen grain at the surface. 
Polar grains are very lighter in weight, so they float on the surface of the water. Now the female flower, it has very long and highly coiled stalk, so it unfolds and goes to a surface. The stigma of such a flower or female flower is sticky, so it accepts the polar grain which is floating on the surface of the water, and then it goes back inside the water, and thus the pollination occurs in case of valencia. Clear? So this is a pollination which occurs in a valencia. Now, how it occurs in Zostera? Zostera is a mara. In Zostera, both the flowers remain inside. They remain still somewhat in the water. Here the flower comes on the surface. Male and female flower comes on the surface of the water in case of valencia. But in case of Zostera, the flowers remain submerged within the water and the polar grain is released in the water. In, not on the surface of the water. Remember in Valencian area, the polar grain is released on the surface of water. In Zostera, the polar grain that is submerged within the water. And now this polar grain is taken up by female flower or the stigma of a female flower. That happens in the case of Zostera. But whether it is on the surface of water or whether it is in the water, the chances are that the pollen grain may become wet and it may get the damage. And to prevent a damage of this pollen grain, this pollen grain is covered by a specific layer called as mucilage. Mucilage they prevent a water wetting. Okay, and so that's why the chances of this pollen grain damaged by water is very less. Okay, so this is happens in the case of valencia area and zostera. The polar grain of such plants they are covered by a mucilage which prevents wetting of pollen grain. Okay, so this is called as hydrophilic, a pollination with the help of water. The example of valencia area is very important, and most of the times they are asking to explain the hydrophilic with an example of valencia. Okay, so you know, exam, show the example, how the male flower comes to a surface, there is a pollen grain, pollen grain remains the flower, how the female flower comes to a surface, then it goes back, takes up the stigma, this female flower is sticky, so it accepts, okay, and so you have to uh, explain in the hydrophilic in the case of valencia. Okay, in Zostera, the pollen grain is remains submerged within a water, so this is Pollination with the help of wind, and this is pollination with the help of water. Okay? Now, so that's all about the abiotic agent who help in a pollination process. Now, the biotic agent, how it helps in pollination process? Biotic agents, that means living things, they help in the pollination. If the animal will help in pollination, some kind of pollination is called as zoophily. Okay? The pollination which occurs with the help of animals is called as zoophily. Which animals they help in the pollination process? There are lots of animals which help in the pollination process. Like for example, bat, bird, like hum hummingbird, and give you the example which has been pollination. Hummingbird, sunbird, these are the birds which have been a pollination process. Squirrel, these are relatively smaller animals which have been a pollination process. Apart from that, the other animals which also help in a pollination process are lizard, reptiles like lizard. Next, it's a lemur, it's a large animal which help in the pollination process. Next, it's a, you can say that armorial rodents, or you can say that in other words, they can also be called as tree dwelling rodents. They also help in a pollination process. So these are the examples of animals which help in a pollination process. Which are the examples? Bear, bird, squirrel, lizard, lemur, arboreal rodents, they help in a pollination. And pollination with the help of animals is called as 
zoo feeling. Okay. Next, a pollination with the help of insects. Animals also include insects, but I will discuss the pollination with help of insects separately. So pollination with help of insects is called as entomophily. Pollination with the help of insects is called as entomophily. Before I start the entomophily, I just revise the names. Pollination by water is called as anemophily. Sorry, pollination by sorry, mistake. Pollination by air is called as anemophily. Pollination of by water is called as hydrophily. Pollination with help of animals is called as zoophily. And pollination with help of insects is called as entomophily. Which insect may help in the pollination agents? So here the agents like butterfly, fly, beetles, all these are insects, wasps, moth, there are lots of insects, even ants. These are the insects which help in a pollination agent. I just discussed few of the examples of insects which help in a pollination. Which insect they help in a pollination process? Butterfly, fly, beetle, wasp, moth, and ant. They are pollinated with the help of insects. This plants which are pollinated by insects, but you have to remember the two examples which are pollinated by insects. First is amorphophallus. This amorphophallus is pollinated by fly. Okay? The flowers of this amorphophallus is such that it is at a height. It is, I think, above a height of more than six feet. So, fly can easily reach over that height and they help in a pollination process. So, the pollination in amorphophallus that is achieved with the help of fly. And in yucca plant, this is the name of a plant, yucca plant, the pollination is achieved with a insect called as moth. Okay, you have to remember these two examples, they are important. In amorphophallus, the pollination occurs with fly. And the yucca, it occurs by moth. Here, those plants which pollinate with the help of insects, these plants should be such a that, that they should attract the insects. And to attract the insects, they have a nectar. Okay? Or they have a very good inflorescence. Like their appearance is such a that, or their color is so bright, the insect will attract towards it. Or they have a fragrance, a very good smell. So the insect will easily attract it towards it. Or the insect visit over it to eat its pollen grain, because this pollen grain is food for that insect. Okay? So, there the flowers of plants who pollinate with help of insects are such a that, they possess either nectar, or they have an inflorescence, very good appearance, okay, and with bright colors, very good fragrance, so the insect can easily attract it towards it. They have a large number of pollen grains which is going to be produced by it, and that pollen grain is acting as a food for the insect, so the insect will easily. That means these plants have a such kind of a reward system, so the insect will visit that plant again and again, again and again. The insect comes for certain reason. Either for pollen grain, or either for fragrances, or either for loom, or attraction, or either for nectar. But when they come or visit the flower, the pollen grain attains on the surfaces of insects. And then they visit the other flower, and thus the pollen grain is going to be transferred. So this is a pollination with the help of insects, what we call it as entomophily. So these are the pollination agents. I just revised. There are two types of pollination agents. Biotic and abiotic. Biotic means living pollination agent, abiotic means non-living pollination agent. Abiotic includes wind and water. Pollination by wind is called as anemophily and the pollination by water is called as hydrophily. Which plant is pollinated by wind? It's a maize, coconut, they are pollinated by wind. Which plant is pollinated by water? It is hydrilla. Valisneria and Zostera, they are pollinated by water. Next, pollination by animals is called as zoophily and 
pollination by insect is called as entomophily, then that is a type of biotic pollination agent. So today we have completed two points which help in a gamete transfer process. One is pollination and the second one is pollination agents that we have finished. Okay. Thank you for watching. Subscribe this channel and learn it. Okay. We will meet in the next session where we will discuss the another topic which relates with the fertilization. Okay. Till keep uh, till then keep watching. Thank you.